Now that we have concluded our sculpting edits, we're ready to move on to the next major stage and that is generating an auto retopologized mesh. The reason for this is if I were to import the original 3D scan mesh, I'll hit enter to apply it to a new layer. I do not want it to snap to the voxel object beneath. You'll see we cannot reuse this mesh. It's too rough and the UVs are a mess as well. So let's just go ahead and clear that. And we want something more like this. A much cleaner mesh to work with. So let me hide that and we'll go to the Sculpt Workspace and get started here. Whenever you have a simple or primitive shape object, 3D Coat is exceptional at doing those without any real assistance. But when you are working with complex shapes, such as a character or mech robot, things of that sort where you've got a lot of complexity to deal with, then it's best to break it down into smaller, more manageable chunks or segments. What I want to do in this scenario is to create a duplicate that is more simplified or has fewer surface details. So I'm going to click on the second to last icon from the right in the Vox Tree Layer panel, Clone and Decrease, and that will take us from an 11 million polygon model down to about 2.5 million. I'll hide the original. The next step I want to take is to smooth all. You want to be a bit careful about doing that because if you have a really low resolution model, when you apply smoothing to it, it's going to be much more dramatic. The higher the poly count, the less dramatic it's going to be. With that done, let's now go ahead and take one more step. I want to separate the head from the body. So what we'll do is we will resort to the Vox Hide tool and that will allow us to hide the head while we do the auto topology on the body section and then we'll come back in the geometry menu and we will invert hidden. Once we are done with both the head and the body then we'll come back and just unhide it all. So let's start that now by going to the Vox Hide tool. You can choose any one of these selection marquees. I'll just go with a rectangular lasso and I'll release. Okay, let's step into the Retopo workspace. For demonstration purposes, I think I'm going to start off Auto Retopo without using any stroke guides, just for comparison's sake. And for the body, let's try 15K. I brought the capture details percentage up, and the rest of it I left as default. And this first stage, it's asking whether or not I want to paint select areas where I need a little extra polygonal density. In this case, I might paint in the toe region, but I think I'll just leave it for now. Now it's asking about the strokes. We're just going to ignore this step for now. Okay. Overall, it did a pretty good job, but I think we want the edges to flow a bit better across the chest, but everywhere else it looks like it's fairly acceptable. I'll just go ahead and delete that. And this time, I'm going to apply some stroke guides. Go through Auto Retopo, keep the same parameters, hit OK. I'll skip this first step and now with the stroke guides I'm going to speed up the playback as I go through this just to keep the video as brief as possible. 
If you'd like to know more about how the Strokes tool works, make sure to check out the Retopo Tools playlist on 3D Coat's YouTube channel. There you'll find a few videos that cover it in great detail. That's going to be the last of the strokes, so I'll just click next. And that's the finished result. I'm going to rename the layer that it created. I go back to the sculpt room. Under the geometry menu, I'll invert hidden. And then start auto retopo again. This time we'll Go with about 5,000 polygons, but the same settings otherwise. In this first step, I'll go ahead and paint select the areas where I need a little bit more polygonal density. And when I'm done with this stage, I'll go ahead and click Next. In the special section of the tool panel, I clicked Clear in order to clear all the stroke guides for the body. I want to mention a very important point here, and that is if the goal of using the 3D scan mesh is for character animation, you probably want to utilize the manual retopology tools where you have full control over the topology, whereas with auto retopo, you're handing over a large portion of the control to an algorithm. Therefore, you may find that you do not get the exact results you're after for the strict topology demands that character animation requires. However, for static, non-animated meshes, then auto retopo is a good option to turn to under many circumstances. So this is our finished mesh. I need to delete the polygons beneath uh, before I try to connect it with the body. So I'll select an edge, then click the edge ring button in the tool panel, hit the delete key. I'll double click on the bottom to select the entire group of polygons and hit the delete key. Then I'll use the brush to sort of nudge all the polygons toward the edge of the voxel object so that I can reconnect it with the body here shortly. I have keep bounds while smoothing unchecked so that when I brush with the shift key held down I can smooth the boundaries of the mesh. I'll quickly step back into the sculpt room and hit Control D to deselect that free selection and going back to the geometry menu and clicking unhide all. I'll now unhide the body retopo mesh layer. With the head layer selected, I'll click Select All Face on Layer, then choose the body layer, and click Move All Faces to Current Selected Layer. And what that did was move the head mesh to the body layer so that I can weld them together. Before I do that though, you might notice that the head mesh is about twice as dense as the body mesh. So to rectify that, I'm going to subdivide the body mesh, but before I do so, I'm going to apply UVs first and unwrap it. The reason for this is because 3 Coat does a much better job unfolding your UV islands whenever your mesh is still in a low polygon state. With the Mark Seams tool selected, I can hold down the Shift key in order to select entire rows of edges or edge loops. Now I'm going to switch to the UV Path tool, which is kind of a point-to-point -point seam selection. It's really good for auto retopologized meshes because sometimes you might get spiral loops or areas of the mesh where you don't have nice contiguous loops. They don't terminate quite the way you want in some areas, like the foot here. Basically the way it operates is you click your first point and your second point and 3D Coat calculates the shortest distance between the two points. So you can click the first and last or intermediate points. While it's still highlighted purple, you just hit the enter key and it will commit it to a seam. Once I've finished selecting all my seams, I can now hit the unwrap button 
and you'll see 3D Code unfold all the individual UV islands in our UV preview window. You can see that 3D Code scales the UV islands proportionally, and many times that's what you want, but in other cases, you may want more texture resolution in certain areas. Uh, for example, most camera shots are much closer to the face than they are other regions of the body, so you probably would want to scale your head island up considerably larger than the other parts of the body. As most of you know, the more scale an island has, the more resolution it gets. I want to mention that if you prefer, you can have 3D Coat apply UVs automatically, and it does a fairly decent job in many cases. But what I'm trying to do here is arrange the UV islands in a visually coherent fashion so that I have the flexibility to use the 2D texture editor in the paint workspace or in Photoshop to edit the textures later on. I'll go ahead and pause the recording while I'm rearranging the furniture here and come back when I'm finished. After tweaking the UVs, I selected the body mesh and clicked the subdivide button. Now I'm using the quads tool in order to connect the two meshes together. Once that's done, I can step over into the Sculpt workspace, hide the dummy copy, and then unhide the original. We could also hide and unhide them from the box tree layer panel in the retopple room as well. If you prefer, you can reduce the opacity of the retopple mesh so you can see the voxel object beneath it better. We're now ready to go to the Bake menu, choose Bake with Normal Maps. And this dialog is for setting up your inner and outer baking cage. I'll skip this step since I don't want ambient occlusion during this process. Then I'll choose a 2K map. If you're in a rush and want to apply auto UVs, you could do that from this dialog as well in the UV map type drop list. I'll hit OK. During this baking process, what 3D Code is going to do is send a copy of this retopo mesh to the paint workspace and assign the maps to paint layers. Now that we're done, we can step into the paint workspace.